We all have a favorite Thomas and Friends character. Whether you're deeply involved in the fandom and never leave the crevices of your mother's basement because you're too busy stalking Twitter desperate for any source of entertainment, or you just saw the show one time as a kid and have vague nostalgic memories of it. Either way, we all have a favorite Thomas and Friends character. You all know mine, it's Gordon, I recently talked about it in a video. I've heard other people, my friends, say Thomas, Percy, James, Henry, Edward, Diesel, Doc, and it makes sense why those characters are people's favorites since they are main characters who have appeared several times and have more development than pretty much 95% of the rest of the show. What I can confirm is that I have never heard someone say their favorite character is Stanley. And I don't blame them. Stanley is a tertiary character at best and has not had a significant role in an episode for over 10 years. And I'm not counting like the reboot, obviously, because he's not in the reboot, duh. But like, even in the Brenner era version of the show, he still didn't have like a starring role or anything. Like he was just in the background. He spoke one time per season. But what if I were to tell you that for a certain point in time, Stanley was one of the most popular Thomas and Friends characters outside of the fandom in the general public, and that he had the potential to become a main character. But was thrown away into the background. This is the story of the rise and fall of Stanley. Stanley first appeared in the 2008 special, The Great Discovery. Immediately, he stuck out from the rest of the engines with his unique white coat of paint. Unfortunately, his personality completely contrasted his abnormal appearance, as Stanley was not given any defining character traits and was a complete blank slate. Instead, he served as a plot device to kickstart Thomas's arc over the course of the film, and naturally, like every other character created during the hit era, was made with the sole intention to sell toys. In the special, Thomas discovers the abandoned town of Great Waterton, and as a way to celebrate the upcoming Sodor Day, is tasked by Sir Tom Hatt to restore it. Naturally though, this causes his branch line responsibilities to take a back seat. Thus, Stanley arrives on the island to take over Thomas's jobs until Great Waterton is fully restored. Unfortunately, conflict ensues as all the other engines immediately take a liking to Stanley, so much so that they believe he's better than Thomas. Now, this plot point always seemed extremely odd to me. As stated previously, Stanley is not a particularly interesting character. He's stereotypically nice and hardworking but nothing sets him apart from the dozens of other characters I could describe using those same two traits. This one piece of narration does explain why Stanley is more popular on a superficial level. He was shinier and bigger and stronger than Thomas. But it still doesn't give the audience a reason to care about him. This is an apotheosis, a perfect example of the phrase show don't tell. Instead of Stanley being shown stronger and faster and more charismatic and more intelligent than Thomas, it's all delivered in narration, making it much less interesting and harder for the audience to form an emotional connection with him. Stanley is Thomas's equivalent of what Spencer is to Gordon. Both are newer and superior engines that immediately garner the approval of the main character's peers. However, one is shown to have a personality and an actual connection to their rival. It's very clearly conveyed that Gordon doesn't approve of Spencer's attitude and that Spencer views Gordon as insignificant and inferior to him. However, in Stanley and Thomas's case, the rivalry is very one-sided. Stanley never acts hostile towards Thomas. In fact, quite the opposite. He treats Thomas with more kindness and respect than his actual friends do, which is just sad to be honest. Now, I'm not saying that the writers should have made Stanley as vain and insufferable as Spencer, rather given him a reason for Thomas to dislike him outside of external forces like the other engines. Or they could have gone further with the one-sided rivalry dynamic and have Stanley show a unique character trait in that he is actually a peaceful engine who avoids conflict or is just too flat out gullible and wholesome to realize when he's causing problems or when someone dislikes him. 
What you may be surprised to learn is that Stanley was technically a member of the STEAM team at one point. Yeah, that's right, the STEAM team. The group of characters that literally are the main characters and were stars of episodes for like five, eight years straight. Like literally like episodes were not allowed to not prominently feature these characters. So this is a big deal for a character to be placed in the STEAM team. Towards the end of The Great Discovery, the engine roll call song is played with one minor change, and that is the addition of Stanley. Stanley! He's the new one now! Looking back, knowing how completely irrelevant Stanley became, I can't help but A, laugh at his inclusion, and B, wonder what the plans were for him in later seasons. He never became part of the main cast, as in season 12, the roll call returned to its original version with only the original eight. Obviously, the reason he was added in was to further promote him and convince the audience to buy more toys since he's in the theme song, kids, and you gotta have all the characters in the theme song, kids, so you can recreate it, kids. Interestingly though, in future specials, the character or characters introduced never received the same treatment. It would have been quite interesting to see how Hero or Steven would be described in one sentence. I also find it incredibly ironic how Stanley was given such little personality to work off of that the only notable description that's given about him is that he's new. You know, you got Thomas, he's cheeky, James is vain, both describe the personalities, and then Gordon thunders down the line and Percy pulls the mail on time, their jobs, which are also huge parts of their character, so that makes sense. But then you got Stanley, and Stanley is just new i mean he's new now but that's not gonna like be a, a be a fact that will be maintained for a long period of time eventually he's not gonna be new anymore and then what do you have about him he's just he's white i guess it could be worse though it's not as bad as henry's lyric henry toots on edward puffs they all do that every scene in together that is not distinguishing from any of them that is like a physical thing they do that is not looking perfect at all <laughs> In season 12, Stanley appeared in a whopping three episodes. Those being, James works it out, Gordon takes a shortcut, and Thomas puts the brakes on. Impressively, Stanley has a speaking role in all of them, a record that will remain unbroken for the remainder of the show. In James Works It Out, Stanley is shown working at the yard. This marks the first instance of him being designated as a shunter, which will become his role in future episodes. Great Waterton is also featured in this episode, being the destination James needs to bring his train to at the end of the episode. Aside from some generic comments, Stanley doesn't do much, although it's nice to see him being affiliated with Great Waterton again. Giving characters specific locations to work at helps make them stand out and remain relevant, such as Salty at the docks and Whiff at the waste dump. Had the waste dump not been as present in the Miller era as it was, Whiff would have likely never made the switch to CGI and would have been one of the countless characters forgotten about in the hit era. In Gordon Takes a Shortcut, it is revealed that Stanley knows of a shortcut to Knapford Station. How does an engine who's been on Sodor for less than a year know of a shortcut that an engine who's been on Sodor for decades not know of? Your guess is as good as mine. The premise of this episode is that Gordon takes a shortcut so that he can arrive at Great Waterton before Stanley and pick up the important passengers. Again, that association with a location is really nice, and I'm glad it's become integral to Stanley's character in this season. Gordon and Stanley also have a fun dynamic, as Gordon's bombastic ego complements Stanley's humble nature quite nicely. The ending is also pretty wholesome. I won't be taking any shortcuts this time. Stanley laughed. And Gordon smiled at his new friend. In Thomas Puts the Brakes On, Stanley acts as the voice of reason to Thomas's incompetence when he offers to take over Thomas's workload, as Thomas's brakes are not working. He then pulls Thomas back to safety after an admittedly decent crash and helps him retrieve the missing special logs. The ending is also pretty wholesome. Wait, did I already say this? It's really peculiar how Stanley didn't get a lead role this season. If there was ever a time to promote him in that way, now would be it. It's almost like the writers didn't want to ruin Stanley the same way every other character given a lead role this season was. Stanley was a perfect, flawless, golden boy in The Great Discovery, and here he is doing the exact same thing in season 12. It's almost like their favorite child, they can do no wrong kind of thing. Quite odd, honestly. 
Now, despite his lackluster character, Stanley was depicted in several merchandises. Of course, the classic main brands like Wooden Railway, Trackmaster, Take Along, but also some rather obscure ranges and sub ranges. For instance, Stanley was one of the few characters to receive a Talking Railway series model. The Talking Railway series was a sub range of the Wooden Railway line released between 2008 and 2010 that featured engines with unique gold magnets that when placed on the destination would play voice lines of Sir Topham Hatt corresponding to the engine. These weren't unique voice lines though as the dialogue would be the exact same except the engine's name would be added in before or after it. Hello Edward! Hello Emily! Stanley would also be sold in the Great Discovery set alongside Thomas with some exclusive Great Waterton set pieces. I find this line rather intriguing as many of the character choices here are perplexing to say the least. Iconic mainstays of the show such as Gordon, Henry, and Diesel were omitted from the line, whilst inconsequential and forgettable ones like Molly, Billy all had models of them. I think it speaks volumes that Stanley was given priority over main characters showing that perhaps there was some interest in making him more relevant in the show, if not for the sole purpose of marketing him. Stanley also received an RC Trackmaster model, another range with limited characters that also oddly enough included Molly. I guess the reason both of them were so prominent in ranges were because they had unique colors that no other character in the show had, especially Molly having that fourth primary color as well as the rather redundant Wooden Railway Early Engineers line released between 2010 and 2011. This range shrunk down the original models of Wooden Railway, making them all use the same four-wheel chassis, whether they were tender engines or tank engines that already used it. Boy, I thought Thomas Wood was bad enough. This range was geared towards younger children, even younger than the already extremely young target demographic of the original TWR. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of this range. Only 11 engines were ever made. Notable ones outside the main characters include Rosie, Hero, Salty, and of course, Stanley. It's clear that Stanley was a character Hit thought had great marketing potential, as he is a constant character featured in these obscure ranges outside of the main cast. Stanley's cultural significance reached an all-time high in 2012 after a video titled A Toy Train in Space was uploaded to YouTube. Now, this is one of the most essential videos in the Thomas fandom, right up there with Thomas Blows His Stack and Mad Bomber. If you haven't seen this video, then where the heck have you been the past 10 years? Anyway, the video is about a wooden railway Stanley being sent into space. Yeah, that's right, space using a weather balloon. It's freaking awesome. But it's more than that. It's a beautifully wholesome story about a father and son bonding with each other over their shared interests. I vividly remember being concerned that Stanley would be lost whenever I watched this video, even though that obviously didn't happen because the video was uploaded after the fact. Like, like the footage from Stanley's perspective is in the video, so there's no way it could have been lost. I, I was a stupid kid, okay? The video blew up, to say the least, having garnered over 8 million views as the time of recording, but this wasn't accumulated over several years. No, in just one week, it already amassed over 2 million views. The creator of the video, Ron Fugelseth, and his son Jaden, would be invited onto the Katie Couric show a month later. Basically, Ellen, one of those types of talk shows. Fugel Seth would detail the inspiration behind the scenes of creating the video. So Great. how did you get the idea to do this video? Well, it all started with Stanley and his love for, or, or Jaden and his love for Stanley. They are just inseparable. He sleeps with them, they go everywhere. Now, how did you get Stanley's expressions? You did oh. something with animation. Yes, Here. yeah, that, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was the challenging part i think i had it done after like a week just the editing right and um and it was sort of it was stanley from Jaden's perspective right that really that's what it is yeah i just wanted to try and and make the video kind of from stanley's perspective because they're kind of like calvin and Hobbes. you know he imagines him he feeds him and they do all these great things you together just... and Jaden would receive the great discovery track master set audience members were also gifted with their own stanley toys courtesy of hit entertainment themselves yeah, they were Trackmaster models. The father-son duo story would be even dubbed over in a Japanese television segment, which would also show the video reaching 3 million views, still less than a year old. 
This was a big deal, to say the least, as many major news networks featured the video on their website. Stanley was now a wildly popular character both in the fandom and outside of it. So, how did Hit capitalize on Stanley's sudden surge in popularity? Short answer, they didn't. This was because in February of 2012, six months prior to Stanley being launched into space, Mattel purchased the rights to Thomas and Friends. Hit would still be involved with the brand, that's why they were able to give away the Stanley toys later on, but Mattel would take over the production of the show and merchandising. Now, you might be thinking to yourself that this is good news. After all, Mattel's acquisition of the brand was the best thing to happen since... Well, since a long time. New writers such as Andrew Brenner improved old characters previously forgotten about. It seemed like a no-brainer for Stanley to receive an episode focused on him, perhaps even multiple ones. Yeah, that didn't happen. Season 17, the first to be made completely under Mattel's ownership, was released in 2013 and featured absolutely zero appearances from Stanley. Stanley would go on to receive semi-improved treatment in the following seasons, as in, you know, he actually appeared in the show. Unfortunately, all were minor cameos, non-speaking roles, and blink and you'll miss it cameos in the background. Smelly waste cars! But, but, why can't I take those lovely clean coaches again? No, Edward has taken those coaches today. Sir Topham Hatt's orders. Ooh. Now, I am a firm believer that a well-written story should be prioritized over toy sales. Just look at the bridge jump scene in The Great Race, which was clearly thought of as a gimmick in a Trackmaster set first, and then had a story written around it after the fact. I am glad that the writing team was never pressured into giving Stanley some ridiculous story about going to space or anything of that comical, unrealistic sort. However, given how cartoonish the show became in the Bubba era, I'm surprised Stanley never got an episode related to space. In fact, season 18 included several dinosaur-themed episodes that were compiled together in a DVD titled Dinos and Discoveries, so it's not like the writing staff were apprehensive to making gimmicky unrealistic episodes if they needed to. A Take and Play and Adventures variant of Stanley titled Stanley in Space would be released in 2017. See the problem? This is a whole five years after the video was first released. Stanley's five minutes of fame ended years ago, as the majority of people who watched that video were parents whose kids had now grown out of Thomas, or the actual kids themselves who had also grown out of Thomas. Furthermore, this has got to be one of the laziest variants of a model I have ever seen. It's literally just a blue tinted snap-on piece of a plastic space helmet. Mattel couldn't even be bothered to give Stanley some unique planets or stars printed on the model, perhaps an exclusive piece of rolling stock like a flat bill with a telescope, just anything to go beyond a plastic piece. This is, kind of, this is such a low effort model, it's, it's sad. So this brings us to the question, why did Stanley fail? He started out as an industry plant for the franchise, someone who was shoved into so many projects and merchandises with the intention of becoming successful, then became an internet sensation, and then was thrown into the background with minor speaking roles for the remainder of the show. I believe there are three main reasons why Stanley was wasted as a character. Firstly, his forgettable personality. Aside from being dubbed as the boy next door, he was never given a defining character trait, thus allowing him to easily fade into the background. Secondly, the absence of the Great Waterton Town in the CGI era. As I've already discussed, Stanley became associated with Great Waterton in all of his model series appearances. Since it was never shown in CGI, Stanley didn't have that special place for his character to be easily attributed to. That would be like if Salty never appeared at the docks or Whiff never went to the waste dump. And thirdly, Mattel being clueless on how to market a character and take some easy free publicity. The Stanley in Space video was the perfect opportunity to make a space-themed season of the show, books, toys, etc, and they just didn't capitalize on it. Although to be fair, this isn't the first time Mattel failed in marketing the show well. Or at all. Now, this video isn't all doom and gloom. I do have some suggestions on how to make Stanley's character more interesting. These aren't what I think Mattel should have done, as they're a little deeper than what they would have been allowed to do as a kid show, but I think they're good ideas for fans to write about, and if you want to use these ideas, then feel free to. 
One aspect of Stanley I think would be interesting to delve into is the idea that he has reached his peak and is now trying to relive his glory days of being the most popular engine on Sodor because he can't accept the reality that he's not who he used to be. Stanley is essentially someone who's peaked in high school. The star quarterback who 10 years later still shows up to the football games and cheers on the team while all the players wonder why a random man in his 30s they've never met is watching them. It would be a really interesting story to see Stanley have to come to terms with him losing his popularity and realizing that it doesn't make him who he is. He can be his own person. He still is the same engine regardless of how respected he is and beloved by the others. He could try to do things to stand out more that become increasingly more and more dangerous, or try and mingle with newer, more popular engines and regain his notoriety. Another unique direction to take his character is to make Stanley more connected to Great Waterton and its citizens, have him develop relationships with various human characters. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's gonna be my opinion on Stanley. That'll conclude the video. Uh, if you do like Stanley, I like Stanley too. He's not one of my favorites, but he's he's good. I like him. But if you really like Stanley, like if he's one of your favorites, then uh, feel free to explain in the comments why. I'd, I'd love to hear why, you know, get some uh, discussion we got going on. And also, I want to really thank you guys for so much support on the last video, like over a thousand, I think almost 2,000 by now, like 1.8 views, 8,000 views. That's crazy considering, you know, how, how long it's been since I had a video to reach that same view count. And also, what's more important to me is the comments on those videos. The comments are so nice. Like, the way you guys just, you know, uh, talk about, you know, your passion for the show and, like, I don't know, the way... You're just, you're just so nice. You guys are so nice to me, and I really appreciate that. You know, you make, whenever someone comments on those videos, you know, it gives me, a, it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate all of you. I love you all very much. Uh, God bless. And until next time, bye-bye.